Today, we're headed out to the Big Reef Mill where we'll be cooking some burgers for dinner and enjoying an Arizona sunset. The trip starts on Castle Hot Springs Road just north of Morristown. Most of this route is an easy gravel road that is passable and about any type of vehicle. Today, we saw a pickup, a UTV, and a few campers. The scenery improves as we get further into the mountains and the road gets progressively more interesting. There are two small sections of this route that travel through private property. The second coming right at Trilby Wash. We slowed here to keep the dust down and watch for livestock in the road. We did end up seeing some cattle here on the way home. After the primitive road warning sign, the road gets some good turns and elevation changes. And after about 10 miles, we find the turn off to the mill. Coming up on the turn from this direction, it would be pretty easy to miss without the help from the GPS. But we spotted it and made a hard left over the berm and into the wash. This last half mile is where high clearance and four wheel drive are necessary. The wash is rocky and somewhat narrow, which makes me glad we bought the Jeep instead of my truck. Right after the most narrow section is the left turn to get out of the wash. A left turn up a small step leads to a larger hill to climb the rest of the way out of the wash. This is really the only part of this trip that might challenge a two-wheel drive vehicle. The short climb is pretty rocky, loose, and rutted and attention to tire placement is a must here. The rest of the trail to the mill was pretty smooth and Carrie took over the driving while I got out the drone and followed on foot. Not much longer and our destination came into sight for the first time. We pressed on enjoying the view of the surrounding mountains as we got closer to the abandoned mill. Construction on the Big Reef Mill began in 1963 and there are several prominent structures that still remain on site. The construction was completed in 1964 at a cost of about $100,000 and the mill would serve as a processing facility for the mica and beryllium produced by the mine of the same name. The vast projected reserves in the nearby hills almost guaranteed that this mill would be largely profitable for years to come. However, the mill's owner found himself in legal trouble in 1967, very shortly after operations began. These troubles persisted and the mill never operated again after October of 1967 leaving the site abandoned for over 50 years. Carrie pulled the Jeep into the large foundation at the base of the mill and set up to watch the sun drop into the mountains. 
The timing was about perfect because the sky was just starting to light up with color. The ore bin, a large yellow storage tank, and several rock walls are still present on the hillside above the main foundation. This proved to be a pretty great place to relax and enjoy the scenery with a couple of burgers. The main foundation would probably even make a great camping spot if we were wanting to spend a night in the Wickenburg Mountains. In addition to the mining ruins, an automobile has been abandoned just southeast of the site. It has been used extensively for target practice even though shooting is not permitted in this area and is so mangled that I couldn't figure out what type of car it was. Now, here's some music and an aerial tour of the mill. I spent as much time looking around and taking photos as I could, and soon realized that it would be dark by the time we were packed up and ready to go. This would be our first time on the trail after sunset, even though it was only about a half a mile back to the main road. So we loaded up the Jeep and head back the way we came. You ready for our first uh, nighttime drive back? Yeah, hopefully it won't be too bad. There was that one little section coming out of the wash where we have to go back. Yeah, a little bit. Where we have to go back into the wash. That might yeah. be a little tricky with the darkness. We don't have a light bar. We don't have a light bar. What do we have though? We got fancy headlights. Okay. Yeah. And your good driving skills, we're gonna go with that. And if worse comes to worse, you'll get out and walk it and stop <laughs> for me. Sure. Off we go into the night. We were really thankful to have installed upgraded LED headlights to replace the OEM units. They really lit up the trail quite well, but I still think that I'd like accessory floodlights for any serious trails after dark. Can you see okay? I can see fine. Okay, good. As long as we're going six miles an hour. Oh, well, that's a good point. Maybe we should have brought the tent just in case we had to spend the night. You know, in case we can't get down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's dark. A little narrower when it's dark. Oh, um, yeah, it really does. <laughs> oh, there's the moon. Yeah. So pretty. Congratulations, babe. Thank you. I did it. There we go. All right, this is the easy off-road part. Yep, look, still technically off-road. And there's the moon. Good this is a nice road. So yep. We hey, made it. Great trip. Just went out to the desert to make hamburgers. Perfect.